people are asking us, what is this all about? Somehow, the Christian church today has gotten far away from the early church's roots. There was ever a time that we need to see the power of God in operation. In Acts 1, it says you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's God's instruction. It's to shoot an arrow so that you hit the mark. Hi, welcome to Hit the Mark. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting subject. Are you really a Christian based on the Bible's definition? Wow, that's going to be really exciting. You know, we started this uh, program a few months ago called Hit the Mark. Mm -hmm. And Hit the Mark, really in Hebrew, the word Torah, mean, the root word means to hit the mark, to shoot an, actually to shoot an arrow and to hit the mark, to hit the target. And so God always wanted his people to hit the mark. And so when we talk about being a Christian, God wants Christians to hit the mark in life. And he, you know, there's a, there's a definition of what a Christian is when, in the Bible, right. but there's also what people just think today is a Christian. I think that a lot of people have their own definitions of a Christian because the church is really trying to redefine and be cool yeah. and be relevant to right. the world. Right. So it brings confusion to what the Bible really says a Christian is. Yeah, when you think about really the word Christian is only used two times in the Bible. Mm. And one of the times is in the book of Acts and it has to do with the church of Antioch. And the church of Antioch was really the first mega church. And it was an international church and people were coming from all over the nations. And what, what it was said about the followers of the, of the way, mm -hmm. which is Jesus, they called them Christians in Antioch, meaning little Christ. So in other words, they were doing what Jesus did. They were speaking what Jesus spoke. They were doing the works of Jesus. So um, that definition of Christian is very radically different from what we would call a Christian today. Because today, most people say, well, if you ask Jesus to come into your heart mm. and you, you, you know, Romans chapter 10, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, you know? And, it, and it's a great scripture. Unfortunately, we don't read the whole Romans 10. We don't understand all that the apostle was talking about when we, when we just say that, what we call the sinner's prayer. Right. Because there's more to salvation or being a Christian than saying the sinner's prayer. That was like an introduction, if you will, to say, Jesus, I make you. And here's, what, here's one of the big differences we call Christians. We call Christians today somebody who's accepted Jesus, but really not as, as Lord. Oh. We, we call mm -hmm. Christians today somebody who's accepted Jesus as their Savior. And there's a big difference because if you're going to be like Christ or be little Christ, then he must be the Lord of your life. And when you were talking about that, I was thinking how many of us, and, and I'm thinking of my own walk in the Lord, how many of us could say that our life truly reflects mm -hmm. Jesus? Yeah. It, when people look at us, they see Jesus, that we are really Christ-like. Are we really Christians according to the Bible definition? Mm. Or have we watered down the gospel and now it's okay, Jesus can be your Savior, but He doesn't have to be your Lord. When Romans 10 doesn't even mention Him just as Savior, it mentions right. the Lordship of Christ. Right. So if Jesus is not the Lord of your heart, if, if you're still on the throne of your heart, right. then if you're still the one saying, I decide what's right and wrong. Mm. I decide what's good and evil, according to my definition. Mm. You know, that's almost satanic because the satanic Bible starts off with saying, do as thou will. Right. So you're not identifying with Jesus, you're identifying with, with the enemy, with Satan, right. The, right. the deceiver. So uh, we need to look at what the Bible says. We want to look at the Bible. Let's look at the yes. scriptures. What does the Bible say a Christian really is? You know, we've been talking about being a Hebrew Christian, mm -hmm. but and really, I want to, you know, I can let the cat out of the bag now. Really, all the first Christians were Hebrew Christians. They yes. understood their identity as connected to Abraham. Right. Today, so, but we won't even go there today. Let's just look at a Christian. What is, a, what is the yes. Bible definition of a Christian? Let's look at Jesus' last words. Yes. And that's Matthew 28, verse 19. 
It says, go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the age. Okay. So that, you know, I've had people get mad at me when we begin to talk about discipleship and yeah. and uh, being a real true follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's funny because we all um, get excited about people getting saved or revivals. Right. And I love all that. And uh, But when we start talking about discipleship, this right. is where the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, the Bible says the way to life is what? It's narrow. It's narrow. It's very narrow. narrow. And what's the way to destruction? It's very right. broad, right? So here Jesus is giving a command, his last words. So when you give somebody your last words or your really this your dying wishes, you're on your, you know, in the sense you're on your mm -hmm. death, but we know Jesus rose from the dead and he's gonna be ascended to heaven. But these are his last words. You right. know, he's, he's giving instructions to his his followers. Right. What does he tell them? Go and make what? And make disciples. Make disciples. He's basically saying, you've got to learn how to conform, teach them to conform their will right. to my will, to conform their ways right. to my ways. And I love it. So go and make what? Disciples. disciples. The word disciple is a pupil. Mm -hmm. It's a learner. So we, we and, and you know, we all should be lifelong learners. But what are we lifelong learners of? Mm. The Torah, the, the Torah. word of God. You know, study to show yourself approved. God wants us to study his word, to meditate in his word. We need to know this word more than we know the latest TV shows or who's who's hot, you know, right. or who's cool. So right. he said, go and make learners, right. make followers, people who will, who will um, do what I am doing. Go and make disciples, teaching them. What, what do we teach the disciples? What did it say there? Teaching them what? To what? what? Observe. observe. All. He said, uh, it's observe. All things that I have commanded. Now, now this is this is where, again, the modern definition of Christian and the biblical definition mm. really don't really um, don't meet. Mm -hmm. they, they they don't intersect there properly. Why? Because we tell people you don't have to observe. Right. You don't right. have to do that. You don't have to. No, no, no. God does not. It's not required. But what does the scripture say in Micah? He's shown the old man what, what is, is good. good. What the Lord requires of thee to do justly, justly. to love mercy. mercy, and to walk humbly with, with your God. God. So yes. part of walking with God and this faith walk and receiving mm -hmm. um, salvation by grace through faith, right? Part of that is observing what? What Jesus commands his right, word right you know the bible says follow my instructions right attend to my words, words. right their life to those who find them their health yes. to all their flesh so yes. when you observe the words of god so what is one of the biggest bible definitions of a christian it's someone who follows the and observes the words of jesus exactly the words of now now here's another thing what were the words of jesus mm. he said my words are not no, they're not mine. mine. I got them from the, the Father. Father. What yes. I do doesn't come from me. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Father. Really, he was mm -hmm. the model for us to live. We don't live our words. We got to go to the Word of God. What's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's evil, what is required. Whenever we have a question about our life, we're supposed to go to the Word. That's what Jesus did in every situation. He went right back to the Torah. All throughout the New Testament, different... Um, passages when he's quoting when he's speaking you can find it directly out of torah and so what was he demonstrating to us he was demonstrating this is how you do life this is how you cause the kingdom of god to come to the earth by using the word of god i think too many times we as Christians, we want to use the world's quotes, yeah. the world's ways, and that doesn't work. Quotes or, you know, and they're all out there. And right. most, most of them get the, the root of those quotes really are found in the Bible, but they're not Bible. They're not scripture. Yeah. And the Bible talks about all the scripture. The right. word is the power of God. The word is the and power. in the word contains the power to even fulfill God's promises because the word won't return void. Right. So, so we man, also, man shall not what live by, by bread, bread alone. But by what every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this is what Jesus is teaching. He's saying, he's saying, 
this is how you make disciples. Right. This is what a Christian really looks like. They observe all that I commanded. Right. So we find something that Jesus is teaching. This is very important. If Jesus taught it, you understand, he knew his audience. Right. He knew that the people listening to him knew the Torah. Right. And now we're a Torahless generation. Yes. We don't know the word. Well, look at our society. That Our society does not know right from wrong, good and evil. Things that we were taught when we were children. And we take for granted. We take it for yeah. granted. The next generation has no idea what is right or wrong. Why? Because we are a Torahless generation. We have to get back to the principles of the Word of God. And if you are a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, I just well, encourage you to live yeah. by the Word. If you call yourself a Christian, it's a mockery to call, right. be called, think about how, how special is that name? It's how so awesome powerful. is it? The name of Jesus, right? Mm. It, we know, we sing songs about it, that, that, you know, about the, the demons trembling right. and, you know, there's power in the name. So how would, would God feel if we're using his name? We're saying, we're called by his name. We love Jesus. We love Jesus, but we're not doing what he said. Right, exactly. Where we don't look like him, we don't talk like him, we don't have the, his mindset, we're not humble like him. The Bible says he humbled right. himself lower, we're lifting ourselves up all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to look at this scripturally this morning, uh, at today, yeah. and let's look also, so he said, teaching them what? To observe all that I command you, right. and lo, I'm with you all. So he's also saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not just telling you to teach it to them, I'm going to be there to help empower power them, right. and I'm going to help them get the revelation. Right. I'm going to help them get the understanding. Which really, when you talk to, in Romans, when you invite Jesus to come and live inside of your heart, it's like the door opens and he drops a measure of faith on the inside That's of right. you. That's but right. it's our responsibility feed to it. then feed, feed that faith, faith yes. to learn the word of God yes. so that we will have power. Why do so many Christians, they are powerless because they don't know the Torah. They don't know the word because the word of God is what gives oh you my life. God. You just gave me the greatest uh, thought because I was mm. thinking how secondhand knowledge right. is not the same mm -hmm. as you eating something for yourself. Right. And so God wants you to get in his word for you and let the Holy Spirit yeah. make the word first hand knowledge so it's not it's not it's not something you can you can say there's a lot of people say well my pastor great that your pastor right. said that but what do you know exactly do you have the revelation or does pastor have the revelation right until you have the revelation you won't be able to walk in it but you know when we first um became christians or i should say yeah. when we were teenagers yeah. One of the things that we practiced was when we would, we went to church all the time, we brought our notebook and our pens and we would write down mm -hmm. the scriptures, what the pastor was actually teaching because he was discipling us. Then we would go home. Then we would open our Bibles and we would reread those yes. scriptures so that what the pastor was actually preaching became life to us. The word of God then, it wasn't just like you said, coming by secondhand knowledge. All of a sudden, what the pastor preached then as we're reading it in our Bibles, as we're underlining it, as we're meditating yeah. meditating on it, it all of a sudden becomes life to us. It becomes power to us. It becomes revelation to us. Yeah, it's true. And I just had somebody tell me, you know, we do a house trip on Friday nights and he said, please bring me my notes. I can't make it this week because I go home and I read, I, he does exactly what you're right. saying because he wants to really understand and learn for himself. And that's right. so powerful. So we need to have that firsthand knowledge. It's like, it's like the mother um, bird taking that and giving feeding directly to the right. mouth and and God the Holy Spirit is like the mother yes and he feeds us those mm. words of God and we need to eat it for ourselves you know yes. that's what God says taste and eat you know my words were what found and I did eat, eat them. them they become a joy so let's look at also some other so what are some of the see a lot of people think that Jesus um, the, you know, he's the, he said the Torah is not valid anymore. Mm. And, you know, they need to get my book. I, I, oh, I want to yes. be a, plug the book, but it's yeah. so important. This book, Hit the Mark, is going to teach people how to walk in the light of God's Torah. Right. It's a, it, Christians don't know that the Torah is for them. Exactly. And, I, and we go in deep, uh, deep in this book about it because peop, uh, the church has been lied to. We've inherited lies. We've been told that Jesus didn't keep the, the uh, told us, told the disciples, you don't have to keep the Torah anymore. 
Which was and, a and, lie that is not true. And he couldn't treat him aside if he even said that. Exactly. Because he would have been taking the word. And the Bible says, if you, in Deuteronomy, it says, if you take one word right. out of this and you tell people don't do this word, you're cursed. Right, exactly. And if he was the word made flesh, why would he say it is done away yeah, with? Yeah. Do you want to look in yeah, Matthew? Okay, yeah. let's read what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So this scripture blows my mind, and I think a lot of Christians didn't understand this scripture when Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. The right. word destroy there actually means one of the definitions, I didn't come to negate the law. Mm. I didn't come to, to uh, do away with the law. It also right. means I didn't come to, to divorce, it actually has a connotation to divorce myself from the law. So um, he said, but to fulfill it, and the word fulfilled, we've been, we taught in other lessons, we said the word fulfilled doesn't mean completion, it actually means to strengthen it or to uphold it, right. to confirm it. So he said, right. I come to confirm the, the, word, the word, the Torah. Yeah. So, and then he says, if you teach men not to do this, you're gonna be the least. So we've got people saying, there's, there's pastors, unfortunately, they're saying that we need to unhitch from the Old Testament. It's like, really? The Old Testament, the New Testament concealed, the, right. the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. We need both. We need the whole book. So does you that know? mean we need to detach from the Ten Commandments, yeah, which yeah. means we're to have no other God before us, we're to make no grave other any graven image? Are we to kill? Are we to steal? What did Paul say? Heaven forbid. Paul talked about this, and he addressed this. So we have to attack the lie of the enemy. And it's burning in our hearts because we know that the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and, what and destroy. Does he, want to steal? he steals the word. He wants to the, steal it. You know, in the parable of the sower, the birds of the air came to steal the yes. word, and if they steal the word, they got the soul. They got the and soul. And so that's what's happening. We're mm. since we're a Torahless generation, and we told people, listen, you could be a Christian, but you don't have to keep the word. And Jesus said there, if you teach somebody. Not to do even the least. You know, I found right. out, I was looking up and I said, I said, Lord, what, you know, I, I need to find out what is the least commandment. Yeah. And it's actually found in Leviticus and it has to do with taking away the mother bird um, in the sight of, um, taking away her kids in the sight of the mother bird. He said, you never do that. It's, oh. It has to do with mercy. Yeah. It has to do with treating, see, this is such an awesome truth. You know, if you could be cruel to an animal, Watch that person. That's right. They're dangerous. Yes. So in God's word, now it's very interesting. So the least commandment, I studied it, and the least commandment has the same reward as honoring your father and mother. Wow. You'll And it says it right there. If you do this, if you, you respect that animal's life and, and you respect right. them and you don't be cruel to the mother by taking the young kids away from her inner sight. Right. It's very powerful. He says, you're going to live a long life. And things right. Like that. It's the same, the same blessing. So really what Jesus saying, the same blessing for the least commandment. Right. You're going to get by keeping the greatest commandments because right. the word is the word. Well, and it's if, all important. But it's if, all you, to, yeah. if you take away or you do not teach the mm -hmm. word of God properly, let's look at this. He's yeah. talking about, you said little animals or little... We are children. We are God's children. So if we are not teaching the word of God properly, and moms, if yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm admonishing yeah. you to teach your children Torah. Yeah. Teach them right from wrong. The commandments of the Lord. When you do that, you are you are causing greatness to come. But when we don't, it's true. Oh, that's so, the Lord is warning us. He's warning, and it's it's so important. So what is the Bible definition of a Christian? A Christian is going to follow yeah. and observe all that. Je so, Je so Jesus, they, you know, Jesus addressed this. Yes. He said, listen, it's, you got to, you, you, even the least commandment. Yes. You better not teach people not to, not to, do, to it. do it. So, and so we've got to get back yeah. to teaching the Bible. And it's very interesting. Um, I was thinking about this. You know, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus. Yeah. And he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's in all the Gospels. And 
by our definition of Christian, we would have, if we were there, we this and we were Jesus. What is that? Hey, listen, um, listen, rich young ruler. Um, if you want to enter in life, all you got to do is just accept me as your Lord and Savior, and you'll be fine. You don't have to do anything else, and and that's that's all I'm requiring of you. But he doesn't say that. No, he doesn't. He says this: if you want to enter into life, what do he say? Keep the. Uh -huh. Commandments. commandments yes so why because the word of god was always god's way to life exactly to live the good life to live the and it's actually so he said what must i do to inherit inherit so and it's very interesting well, you can how do i inherit eternal life he says you've got to keep the commandments but one of the things so what was he saying also mm. how do you get disinherited from life Mm. You negate the commandments. You negate it, yes. You don't observe all that Jesus told you to do. Well, the rich young ruler tried to respond in a very religious way. He says, I've done them all. I've done them but all. But he didn't. But he did yeah, yeah. Which lets, let, it reveals to us, we need to examine our hearts, you know? And we need to make sure that, that our life lines got, up with the word. Was prideful very prideful and he says no I did but but God but the Lord revealed his heart right. because he really the Lord of his heart was himself exactly he wasn't willing to give up his possessions for the gospel right and think about it is that Christians are, are the same way today. we don't understand that mm. everything we have really belongs to God yes. and whatever he asks you to do you got to be like whatever he tells you to do you got to do it there are times when he he says yes. make that sacrificial gift why because there's something better on the other side yes but until is. We allow, allow him to be the really the Lord of our lives and on right. the throne of our heart and say, Lord, what does your word say? Right. What is the Holy Spirit asking me to do? I will obey it. Because right. that's a real Christian. And we need to go back to, do we have idols in our hearts? You know, we think of idols as images that you yeah, worship yeah, or yeah. you pray to. But, you know, like you said, your idol can be yourself. Be yourself. And meaning that I control my life, I rule my life. And, and, and so we'll talk about this other program. Yeah. So when you when you begin to become a Christian, and especially a Hebrew Christian, you're going to live differently. Yes. Because you're not going to pick and choose what you want to do and when you want to do it. You're going right. to say, no, no, Lord, I'm all yours. Right. I'm, and the old timers used to say that, Lord, whatever you want to do, yeah. just do it. And it's like one of those most dangerous prayers. Yes. But. We, sometimes we say that, but we're really not willing to change. Right. And so on our journey, we found out that being a Christian really means I'm going to be a Hebrew Christian, really means I'm going to do everything God said in His Word. Yes. And and what He asked us to do yesterday is the same thing He's asking us to do today, and the same thing He's asking us to do tomorrow, is to just trust Him and believe His Word, for right. then His Word is life. Right. And obey what He's saying, and you do it by faith. Many times in the natural, it does not make sense. But when you are willing, just like Abraham, did it make sense that God said to Abraham, mm -hmm. I want you to leave your comfort zone. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave everything that you know. And I want you to walk in faith and trust me. Because if you'll do that, then I will bless you. And I will make you a blessing to the nations. But he had to be willing to do that and if we are hebrew christians and abraham is the father of our faith we have to be why ready. do we think we're not yeah, god true. is not going to require us in times to step out in faith and do what he asked us to do yeah and you know i i want all of you watching i want you to be real christians yeah um the world needs us to be the light that right. Jesus said, you know, Jesus said, you, I'm the, while I'm in the world, I'm the light. He says, but when I leave, right. you know, think about it, Christians get, get the same blessing that Israel, Israel was to be a light to the nations. Right. Now we are the seed of Abraham. We are now the light to the nations, but you can't be a light or salt. You know, I love that right. old song. He said, we are salt and light yeah. in the world. Well, that's a real Christian to be salt and light. That's well, right. we've lost it. And now we tell everybody we're Christian, but we're just like everybody else. Right. We don't do anything different. Right. We don't look different. We don't have any different morals. We don't have any different standards. And that's not being a Christian. No. And so we're, we're just saying, listen, examine yeah. your heart today. 
ask yourself, am I a Christian based on the Bible definition? Yeah. Is Jesus my Savior or is Jesus my, my Lord? Lord. Yeah. If I confess him as Lord, then I'm going to start to observe and do all yes. that he command, commands me to do. I'm going to live authentically. Right. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm, you know it's, we talk about, it's funny because they have this saying, and I've been on TV crazy now. They're like, the BBC is talking about fake news, fake news. <laughs> but sometimes we're a fake Christian. You're right. Right. Forget fake news. We don't know we're fake. We call ourselves a Christian, yes. but we're not following God's word. We're exactly. not following the Torah. We're not being the light. And so we want to pray for you today. Yeah. If you're watching this today, understand Matthew 28. God wants you to be not just a Christian in name. He wants you to follow. Jesus wants you to follow him. Yes. To observe all things that all things he commanded. And he said, even the least commandments are important. Right. It's funny. And so if the least commandments are important, mm -hmm. how much more would the Ten Commandments be that exactly. are written on stone? Exactly. It's very important. And we even say those are those don't count anymore. There's people that say that. Hmm. So we're gonna pray for you today. We want you to be a real, authentic yeah. Christian. Listen, it means you gotta you need to be in a church. Yes. You need to be reading your Bible. You need to be praying every day. You need to be feeding on the word of God. You can't be right. living off the junk food of the world. No. You need to be living off the meat and the milk of the word of God. Yes. That's how you're gonna grow. Exactly. And that's how you're gonna be transformed. You're transformed by what? The renewing of your, your mind. mind. Yes. And you prove the good and acceptable will of God. And you won't be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12. So right. how does that happen? You got to start with repentance. Yes. You got to start with humbling yourself. Baby, pray for the yes. people today. Yes, Father, we just thank you for this Hallelujah. word, this Hallelujah. revelation that you've given us today. Oh, Holy Spirit, just come Go right now and examine yes. all of our hearts. Yes. Search yes, our hearts. Give the Holy Spirit the right of way yes, to go right into now. every part of your life right now. Stop making excuses for living the way that you're living yes. or feeling the way that you're feeling. That, that's not going to fly yes, with God. Yes, yes. Just come before him. Lord, we come before you and yes. we bow humbly. Wow. We say, Holy Spirit, search our hearts. Jesus, be the Lord of our lives right now. We give yes, you Lord. our lives. So we give you yes. our, our mind. We give you our soul. We give you our body. We give you our, our spirit. Yes. We give, give you every part. Yes. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, right now, to speak loud yes. to us. Any areas that we're falling short or we're missing the mark, Holy Spirit, come. You're our teacher, you're our guide. Speak to us. Lord, those who are watching today, maybe they've never prayed that prayer. Lord, today I pray that they would open their hearts and they would just say, Lord Jesus, Lord I believe, Jesus, I believe in that you. you are the Son of I God. You, the Son of you God. died on the cross, you died on the cross and, you rose, from and you rose from the dead. I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all of my sin. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. And today, today, I believe, I believe you. You are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Spirit, come in. Lead me, guide me. Lead me and guide me. And direct me. Direct me. As I read the word. As I read the word. As I read Torah. As I read Torah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Make it alive to me make now. Make it alive to me now. Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in the lives of the people. And Lord, those who are watching, if they don't have a, a, a word church, a Torah church, if they don't have a church, Lord, I pray right now, supernaturally, you will connect them to the right yes. following, the right community, the right church that you have for them, that they can learn how to walk in the holiness and righteousness of Torah. Oh, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. Those mothers who are watching today, yes. equip them yes. to teach, teach their children the how to obey the word yes. of God That's today. And Lord, if there's anyone Amen. sick in their body right now, we come into agreement right now. You said, Lord, that we are to just speak the name of Jesus. So in the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus, we speak healing. Name right now over Miracles your body, over your body right and now. lord whatever they Medicine need today to meet their need we pray i thank you for divine alignment for their divine assignment right now in jesus name amen amen, amen. Well, yeah we want to just talk about our ken's um <laughs> book on hanukkah and purim a lot of you are wanting to know how to keep the feast days you know we get to do this. Yeah, it's, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of and fun. There's revelation in every ritual. Yes. And so a lot of people, you know, last year was the first time I did Hanukkah in 30 some years. 
Yeah. And uh, we're going to be having a, actually a house church Hanukkah, December 7th. You're welcome to come and yeah. be a part of it. But you can actually do Hanukkah in your own home. That's right. what I suggest. Do Hanukkah in your home. Learn how to do it. I have the Hanukkah prayers in this book. Right. Uh, teach you how to do Hanukkah. What are the hidden meanings and the revelation behind Hanukkah? Yeah. And how you're going to find out. You're not. I know some of you won't believe it, but Jesus celebrated Hanukkah yeah. and revealed one of the greatest revelations uh, during that time. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. <laughs> Maybe we'll teach on it a little later. But get the book, Hanukkah and Pearl, yeah. uh, for Christians. And you can get all our books and resources on Amazon. Right. Be a great blessing. Here. Listen, if you enjoyed the show, mm -hmm. uh, tell somebody about it. Um, follow us on YouTube, Hit The Mark TV. Yeah. And uh, help us get this word out because yeah. we believe it's life-changing. Yes. And until next time, let's... Hit The Mark. <laughs>